For me, a big part of being an athlete is not only the physical training, but also having the knowledge that I prepared properly. Whatever you live for, just live. I was never gonna be a man's physique. Didn't have much of an off season. I like his physique better. I'm always very energetic. I will have to put me as one of the greatest. Mr. Olympia was won by the back. So I wanted to ask you, how, how do you feel about bodybuilding today? Do you, do you follow bodybuilding currently, like the bodybuilding news and the Olympia and the Arnold and all that? I do, but I think I've changed a lot because when I promoted my competition years ago, the big interest now had to do with the bikini, the fitness, the class of physique, but bodybuilding always will have its own audience. But there's no more camaraderie today in bodybuilding, especially back in the 70s. But today is so different because now you see women competing, which is great because in my time when I was competing years ago, you never even seen a woman in the gym and women were not competing. So now it's much more integrated and it's much more appealing to the public because people want to see like the fitness, the different weight division, mm -hmm. the female competitors, you have the bikini, you have the fitness, and then you have different classes, which is, which is pretty good. By the way, you mentioned your show, Ferrigno. I remember Ferrigno Classic, right? That was an awesome yeah, show. Yeah, Ferrigno Legacy. We did it for Legacy. three years. Mm -hmm. But it was too time consuming for me. And for my son and I, that's why we decided to move on because it takes a lot of time and effort. That was a great production, I remember. The stage looked amazing. It was all green. That yeah. was awesome, man. It was great. I enjoyed it very much. I remember that, yeah. So in your opinion, right? Who deserves to be called the best bodybuilder of all time? Would you, or maybe who's your favorite bodybuilder of all time? You know, it varies because you have different uh, opinions, like Steve Reeve, uh, Arnold, myself, the current bodybuilder. It's kind of like I have a Lamborghini, a Ferrari, a, a Maserati, and then it's, it's, it's a different choice. But, it, but the thing about pumping iron when I've done is the only film that you get to see the personality. Like you take me, Arnold, my cast, like Ken Waller. That appealed to everyone because it was a personality. Because the nice thing about us in the 70s, when we were posing, as we posed, we're conveying to the audience. It's almost like talking to the audience, but they're speaking. And I think I much rather prefer the aesthetic look. But bodybuilding today is very tough because you got to be shredded on stage and you can't have hardly have any floors. Who was a bodybuilder that inspired you to get into the actual professional bodybuilding? Well, Steve Reeves, I remember my father took me to the movies. I remember seeing Steve Reeves. When I saw him have the two chains when he pulled down the pillows, I said, that's it. That's what I want to be like, because he was like the epitome of a man. At the time, he was 32 years old. He had no cavities. He had a beautiful physique. So it was a very manly quality about him. So that got me started. Then was Larry Scott, who won the first Mitchell Olympia. Then, of course, the uh, honor came on the scene. And then eventually, <clears throat> I jumped into it. What was your most, like, memorable moment competing against Arnold? Or do you remember like a memory that really stuck up? What was it like competing against him? Because I, I hear stories about him that he would always like try to like psych people out. A memorable moment for me was I was on stage with him because he was just the two best guys in the world because I won the universe when I was 21 years old. At 22, I was on stage with him and I knew that no matter what happened, we're the two, the two greatest bodybuilders in the world because no one ever gone from a teenage to America in three years, gone straight to the Olympia. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that we changed the sport. I changed the sport, especially when it came to the Incredible Hulk series, and then he'd gone his direction. But at the time, bodybuilding was more like a shadow sport. Yeah. But it's interesting because, like, physically, if you look at your height, it was like, it definitely always stood out. It doesn't matter what stage you were on, like, it, the, the height. Like, was that easier or more difficult for you to, to with that type of height? You know what I'm saying? Because you were 6'5 or at that time right like yeah. it was it was definitely like was it easier or harder to put on muscle in order to compete with those guys it's much harder because they have long joints you have a long range of motion so i had to work twice as hard compared to other people that's why i wanted to build this to be the first bodybuilder over six feet to have perfect symmetry so i literally train my legs like three times a week to bring in a proportion of my upper body wow that's incredible um so you mentioned the hulk series right um, a, couple, a few years ago, Stan Lee passed away. He was a creator of all the most, probably the most iconic characters, including the Hulk. Um, what, I know you posted a few times about him. What did he mean for you? What did this man mean for you in your, in your life? Well, when I was a kid, I used to read the Hulk comic books. And I remember in the beginning, it said, written by Stan Lee. This is before I even discovered Muslim magazine. So I used to read the Hulk uh, comic books uh, like Spider-Man because I was obsessed with power. 
I wanted to give myself confidence. And then eventually with Stan Lee done a few cameos uh, on my TV series, I became good friends with him because he became my mentor. But it's funny, I told Stan that it wasn't for you. I would never gone into bodybuilding because when I was a kid, like 11, 12 years old, he started all. If Joe Weed was after that, but Stan Lee, was, he brought me to what I am today because it wasn't for him. I will be talking to you today. I wouldn't be Mr. Universe. I wouldn't be doing uh, any TV series. That's crazy. You know, it's interesting because I talk to a lot of guys in bodybuilding and, and they all bring up the superheroes. That's how they got, like, that's how they got the, you know, the idea of building muscle. Yeah, because as most children are very upset with power. That's why I was reading the comic book, because most pro bodybuilders have what you call an inferiority complex. I had one because we had a bad issue with our father. That's why I built this body. You would say, hey, nobody's going to beat me up. Let you take Bull Pearl, you take Arnold, everyone. I can't speak for them, but I've heard that they have similar relationships. Yeah. So eventually you want to overcome that because it, that's very common among the pro bodybuilders. Did it give you a lot of confidence when you got the muscle as, as a teenager? Did you feel like your life changed completely? Oh, yes, because, you know, kids would make fun of me. So when I started to put size and muscle, then I started to gain more respect. But the bigger challenge for me, this was a very interesting story. When I won the Mr. Universe, they couldn't use my interview because my speech was not understandable. So having a severe relationship with my father, I just started to study phonetics. And then up to this point now, having this cochlear implants is almost like being uh, very emotional to me because it's taken to me the dream I've always wanted to be with addiction, with the hearing, everything. So it's like, it's, just, it's the perfect time and place to have this done. Yeah, it's incredible. Now you, you in the Guinness World of uh, Records, right? For you, the youngest guy to win uh, Mr. Universe, right? I believe. Yeah, the IBB Mr. Universe. 20, 21 years 21 old. 21 22. That's crazy because in today's bodybuilding, it seems like guys don't even peak at that age yet. You know what I mean? Like it's just closer to 30s. I feel like it's the, the physique's get you know better and better. It's well, today's bodybuilders, you can win the competition. Like for example, guy competing in the 40s, almost in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And there's a bodybuilder I competed with years ago called Al Beckel. Mm -hmm. He's 90 years old. Did you know that? He's 90. Those shows you that the level of competition, you can compete in the 40s, even in the 50s and 60s. Because in my time when I was young, 40 was like the cutoff point. Yeah. But now it's changed because with, the, uh, with the, the quality of food, the training, the equipment. That's incredible. Is it true that you're a sheriff or used to be a sheriff? I became a deputy sheriff 15 years ago. I went through the academy. I didn't want to be honorary. I wanted to be the real deal. So I went to the academy. You have to learn how to shoot, how to drive, with all, all the laws of the rest. Then I got sworn in. So I'm a certified deputy in LA and also a center with the baseball. So you actually, you actually work like on the force? Oh, sure. I do a lot of research, uh, research work. I do a lot of search and rescue. And uh, answer the forest, like looking at people with suicide, patrol, stuff like that. I also teach to a weapon shooting. I'm a marksman. Also, I talk to a lot of young kids and get them motivated, especially being like a real life hero to them. That's incredible. So what, are, like, I mean, there's been a few bodybuilders that were actually on the force, like Ronnie Coleman and stuff like that. But like, when, when you show up somewhere, people are like probably like, what? what's Lou Frigna doing here? That's crazy. Well, you got to be very careful because, you know, once you're out there, I mean, you have to protect life and property. I take it very seriously because especially you've seen what happened the past year and a half. It's very tough because you're in that situation. Your job is to protect life and property. Also, you could be in danger. So you have to almost change your mind shift knowing that you're protecting uh, the public. Now, is it true that you also were appointed as a member of council by, by President Trump to serve uh, and, and be a part of the fitness uh, nutrition? Yeah, that was years ago. I don't know that they haven't done much, but I was very honored to be involved with the president of council because Arnold did that years ago. So basically, right now, I'm doing the Ferrigno film, my daughter and I, because we want to change America and make people feel they should be more healthy than, than uh, be involved in anything else. Uh, do you think uh, America is getting healthier? Because I know you mentioned Fregno Fit, that's your company, right? That's your uh, association. Yeah, so my daughter and I, the problem is there's so much obesity in this country. Mm -hmm. Too many drugs, too much alcohol. So I try to get the message saying that you can't get in shape in a week. You have to be very consistent with your diet, uh, your training, your proper sleep. There's no secret. And that that's why this past uh, 13 months without the COVID, gym equipment skyrocketed because most people want to buy gym equipment for home, which is a positive thing. 
And then people that, for example, have been out of shape, it gave them a chance to be in shape because many people are spending more time home than traveling. So it was a positive thing that people want to focus more on their bodies. And what does Fregnofin do exactly? What, what kind of programs do you have? What kind of what? Uh, what kind of programs do you guys have for Igno Fit? What kind of uh, well, it's a three month program. You go online, it gives you a diet plan to tell you how to train anywhere in the world, and it's like uh, $99 for three months. And it helped a lot of people because over the years, when I've done a lot of different comic con signing, and people actually come up and say thank you for uh, going on the website because you changed their life, especially losing 100 pounds. You see, but people starting to realize you only live one, and your body's your health. If you'll take care of your body, I mean. The best doctor in the world is not going to give you the, uh, the antidote for it. Yeah, that's true. Um, is there anything you would want to change about the fitness industry or the sport of bodybuilding today or, or make something different? I think it's hard to say you want to change. I would say uh, focus more on the classic physique. Mm, you like classic? Then having so much thickness. And then it's not the bodybuilder's fault. It's that what they require to be on stage. I like to just sit, you know, the posing. Like more conveying to the audience than being more focused on the density. Uh, what kind of projects you got going on right now? In addition to Frigna Fit, any type of film stuff that you're working on? Well, I have a movie on Netflix called uh, Guest House with Paul Shore, the comedy. I'm doing a film next month, so I'm back in the swing. And uh, I'll probably do another film with, with, when, when Europe opens up. So I've been really busy again, but I'm excited about the co implant now and going with, with a better approach.